Hello, what's up everyone? For this image, I will be making use of three differently exposed photos and combine them with exposure blending using the TK Panel plugin in Photoshop. There will be quite a bit of masking and local finer adjustments involved here. For the editing, I will be using Adobe Photoshop, but also, as said earlier, I will use the TK Panel plugin, which allows me to create luminosity masks. And finally, I will be using the Nick Collection plugin to give the image the final look. So without further talking, let's start with the editing. You can see I have my three images opened in the Camera Raw Editor of Photoshop and I'm going to use the middle exposure as my base image. And first I want to start in the optics by activating those two settings. Then let's just go back to the basic stuff. And right away for the profile, I'm going with Adobe Landscape, since I want this sunrise image to be very vibrant and colorful. For the white balance, I can simply go with cloudy, which should look quite nice with some subtle blue tones in the sky. Since I'm applying an exposure blending method on this shot, I don't need to worry about things as exposure or highlights or shadows. So I'm not touching those, but I'm heading straight to the texture, which I want to slightly increase just to get some more details out of this image, as well as the clarity. Then let's also add some vibrance for some more saturation. And that's already it for the base adjustments. Then let's do some local adjustments. You can see I have applied two gradiated filters, one for the sky. And here I just want to make those clouds a little more interesting by bringing up the clarity. Also, I'm dropping the texture to make them a little softer. And I think it would look nice with a subtle magenta color cast in there, so I'm also adding some tint. But that's it for the sky. Then let's work on the foreground real quick. Again, I just want to make the foreground a little sharper and a little more detailed by increasing the texture. And I'm also adding clarity. Nice, that's it for the local adjustments. Now let's do the color grading in the color mixer. First, I want to work on the saturation. That means I'm boosting the reds and the orange tones. Instead, I'm dropping the yellows. And this will mainly affect this little band on the horizon, which I think looks a little strange with strong yellow saturation. Then I'm also slightly dropping the greens and bring up the blue saturation. Okay, nice. Then I'm continuing with the split toning. I want to start with the shadows by giving them a cold color. Of course, that's way too strong, so let's drop the saturation. For the midtones and the highlights, I want to apply a nice warm color tone somewhere in this range. Could even increase the saturation. Okay, and then let's do the same thing for the highlights. And again, boost the saturation quite a bit. All right, nice. And finally, I could add some sharpening here. And that's pretty much it for the raw adjustments of the base image. Now, since I have multiple photos to work on, I'm simply selecting them all, right click, synchronize settings, and just make sure to check all and hit OK. Once that is done, I can open them up in Photoshop. The first thing I want to do here is the exposure blending using the TK panel. And I'm doing this because here with my base image, I practically have no information in the darker areas as well as in the brighter areas. That's why I have this shot, which has a lot of detail in the bright spots, and this shot, which has all the details I need in the darker spots. Now for the exposure blending, this overexposed image will actually be my base exposure. That means I'm going to copy all the other images on top of this file and make sure to close the other ones. 
And at this point I want to say I'm not that experienced yet with the TK panel. So the explanation for a lot of those things might be a little complicated. So I'm really sorry for that, but I'm sure it will get better in the future. So let's just start with the brightest exposure turned on and apply a layer mask on the other two. Then while they are still turned off, I'm selecting the middle exposure right here. Let's head to the TK panel in the rapid mask window, check layer mask and then just hit composite. The TK panel will create a layer mask and you can see it already has blended those images together. But of course it does look a little strange. So we need to manually work on this mask right here. And therefore we have this two up mode. Now when I hit vertical, you can see the mask pop up on the left side. And now I'm simply grabbing a black brush Let's change the opacity of the brush to not make this too heavy. Now I basically want to make the foreground a little brighter. That means I need to mask out this part. Now watch on the right side, the foreground will get brighter. And that's exactly what I'm aiming for. I want to have all the details there. So I'm pretty much masking out everything here. Likewise, I'm doing the opposite on the sky, since I want to have all the details in here, so I'm using a white brush and just paint over the sky. But that looks already pretty good to me. So let's close this mask and deactivate the two-up mode. Then basically I'm doing the same thing for the darkest layer. While it's still turned off, I'm heading to the TK panel and hit composite. This plugin will create a mask, and which again doesn't look that good. So we need to manually work on it in the two up mode. I think I don't need that much of this mask. So I'm starting masking out again using a higher brush opacity this time. Okay, I still want to have some parts of this darker exposure, mainly in the sky. So I'm switching to white as my brush color and I'm making sure to use a low brush opacity Let's just paint over the top of the sky. Okay, looks good to me. And again, let's close it. Deactivate two up mode. And let's merge everything by selecting the layers and hitting Ctrl E. Next up, I want to clean up the image a little bit. So that means I'm zooming in and make use of the spot healing brush. And first I'm getting rid of the sensor spots. And sadly I also need to get rid of some of those branches, which will be a lot of work. So I'm going to fast forward at this point. Okay, that was annoying, but that was totally worth it. So let's continue. Next up, I want to add some glow on the horizon. And as usual, I'm just going with a new layer and switch the blending mode to hard light. And let's grab the brush tool. And by holding down Alt key, I'm clicking in this area so I can pick up this exact color tone. Let's make it a little more saturated. Also, I'm dropping the brush saturation to around 10% to not make this effect too strong. And then I'm simply painting in some glow in here. All right, nice, that should be enough. Then once more, let's merge those two layers. And I think I want to apply a curves adjustment layer and let's just add some more contrast here. So I don't want to have this over the whole image, so I'm just using this layer mask of that adjustment layer and hit Ctrl I to invert it. I'm grabbing the brush tool with the foreground color set to white and I'm painting back in that contrast, especially over the sky. All right, I'm merging this again. Then it's time for some touching and burning. So let's duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J head to the Nick Collection plugin and first I want to target the highlights. That means I'm looking for a lights mask 
I think this one should work. So next, just hit the layer mask and hit the second light mask. Then create a new layer and create a clipping layer by holding down the alt key and clicking between those two. Switch the blending mode to overlay. And again, with a white brush, I'm simply making a few areas brighter, but first let's again drop the brush opacity. And now we can add some more brightness to the foreground. All right, and I am basically doing the same thing for the shadows. So let's merge everything again. Hit Ctrl J to duplicate it. Then let's look for a dark luminosity mask. Just like this one, I guess. And with the layer mask mode activated, let's apply it. Create a new layer, create a clipping layer, switch blending mode to overlay. And instead of white, we are going with the black color for the brush since we want to darken some areas. And then just carefully brush over the sky first. Maybe even the foreground a little bit. Okay, nice. Then let's merge it once more. At this point, I want to make use of the Nick Collection. So let's head to filter Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. Here I'm starting with the polarization effect, which will help me to enchant those colors some more. And as said earlier, I want to have a nice vibrant sunrise image. Okay, then let's set another filter straight away. I could go with the skylight filter to make the sky a little warmer, but I don't think I want to have it over the whole image. So I'm adding a control point here, just over the sky. All right, let's go for another filter, this time with the tonal contrast. Here I'm resetting everything first since it's quite heavy. And then just boost the midtones. Just some more contrast here. All right. Then let's add one final filter. And here I'm going with the glamour glow. And let's reset the saturation. Again, I don't want to have it over the whole image, so I'm adding another control point for the sky. And that looks pretty good. So let's apply it like this. All right, nice. Now I want to go with another curves adjustment layer. Here I'm choosing the blue channel and I can use this to get rid of the blue color cast by picking the point for the highlights and just dragging them down slightly. And you can see we get a much more intense sunrise. Okay, nice. At this point, I want to stop the editing since I'm quite satisfied with this image. So I hope this was interesting, helpful and at least a bit understandable. It was quite a bit more complicated than usual. So if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.